So good morning. Uh, you can see off to the right, we have three new uh, zucchini blossoms, which we use to make some uh, squash blossom pudding uh, in a Southwest style. And this morning we're having some nice waffles and they're made using the whipped egg folding technique. It's like you make a meringue with the eggs, not cooked, but whipped. And you fold it into a mixture of uh, egg yolk, flaxseed, flour, buttermilk, if you like it tangy. Got some Ackerman's maple syrup, which we like to heat up in a little pot. And some canned peaches from last season. Is that last year's yeah. season? From where? From Stillman's. From Stillman's out in New Braintree. We, we like to can them and then eat them all winter on right. our waffles. Right. And soon we'll have some fresh pears from uh, out front. We have a couple uh, French espalier pears, a Bartlett and a Japanese style pear. Janet is a little smaller version of the waffle and that's it. So we're going to go over the egg separation technique once again. Today we're going to use it for uh, to make fluffy waffles. Belgian so, waffles. Belgian waffles. And where did you learn the egg separation technique? I learned it in seventh grade in Mrs. Bach's home economics class at Broadmeadows Junior High School at that time. Okay, let's see. How do you do it? Okay, so you take a flat surface, you give it a good bang, then you, where the crack is, you bring your two fingers together, you separate it, pull the top up, let the egg white flow out, scoop it into the other side. You can do it a couple times, and sometimes you help it along. There you go. And then you're putting the other one over there. What are you going to do with that? I'm going to add buttermilk and flour and some flax and then butter and make it into a Belgian waffle. So the yolk is going to get mixed directly with the flour. And then the egg whites are going to get whipped up and folded into that mixture, right? Correct. Now, a lot of people make the mistake of cracking the egg on a sharp edge. You don't need a sharp edge and you end up creating a... And actually I read somewhere that if you crack an egg on a flat surface, bacteria doesn't enter the egg. And if you hit the egg on a, on a edge, bacteria can enter yeah, into the... It. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to show how we make the batter. I'm gonna put a cup of buttermilk and take four egg yolks. What is buttermilk? Buttermilk is, I don't know. <laughs> you can make your own buttermilk yeah, with a little you can acid. Yeah, right. It's like lemon juice, or it can be cultured. This happens to be cultured. See, it says cultured there, kind of like a yogurt, but it's a different thing. And um, we get ours from Thatcher Farms on Saturday mornings when we want it. It takes us a few weeks to use buttermilk, though. I like to use what, um, a half a cup of flax. So we have flax seed, which is... ground up. Ground flax seed, which is good for... Good fiber. I was going to say compost. Too. It's good compost for your intestines. Nice ground, uh, so ground flax seed has a nutty taste. It adds some texture. And you need some flour to hold it together. A little flour to put half, in there. Half and half. We put actually half the, half the mixture is actually the fiber. And in contrast to using whole wheat where there's a small, very small percentage of the uh, material is the fiber. In this case, we're mixing a flour and same amount of fiber. Yeah, now we're mixing. Now, why are you mixing this by hand instead of your KitchenAid? Um, habit. How's that? <laughs> you don't need to mix it up too much. Yeah. Now, we have the egg whites in the KitchenAid. We're going to crank that up all the way. 
So we're starting to uh, get the peaks. Now when you're whipping the egg whites, you're actually forcing air, air bubbles, into the protein of the egg, which stretches and forms bubbles around water droplets inside. And that's what creates the meringue. And basically, by fluffing up, it uh, can substitute for the use of baking powders, baking sodas, and other rising agents like yeast. You can see that it's the waffle has risen a little bit. It's opened the lid of the waffle. Maker. It's pushed the metal up. Nice. Gold. Takes two or three minutes on each side, and if you like it really crispy, like my niece Erin, you just leave it in a little, another couple of minutes, and it will brown up and be crunchier. Okay, so here comes breakfast. Just flip it into the plate. So I'm going to put a little dab of butter on there and some berries that I picked from my yard the other day. Okay, and of course you top it off with some Ackerman's maple syrup. Ackerman's has a special uh, breakfast club they're offering. You can go to the website, quincyfarmersmarket.com and scroll down till you see their breakfast club order. Uh, they'll send you maple syrup and the fixings for pancakes all year long. Help you, them out. You were just taking the maple syrup from a pot because you like to heat it up. Yeah, I like it hot. I like it to melt the she butter. She likes everything to be at the same temperature so the butter melts from the ma both the maple syrup and the waffle uh, beneath. You can also get Ackerman's maple syrup at our little market store at Bones Brothers on the Southern Artery. Never have too much syrup. Yeah, my nieces and nephews come in, my great nieces and nephews come and they say you have to fill up every hole. <laughs> <laughs> They're Ackerman's best customers. So now we have a little bit of the morning ceremony. One nice thing to do with uh, most any dish is to get a little fresh herb there on the plate. And this is a uh, mint grows uh, in the backyard. And if you just bruise the leaves by rubbing your fingers across it, it releases the uh, volatile compounds. And it's a nice smell uh, at breakfast time. If you're feeling a little nervous or stressful to start the day, uh, you can try doing a similar bit with uh, lavender. Lavender is relaxing. It's good at night. Rub on your pillow. If you don't have any fresh, you can get you know essential oils and lavender set the things. But we it grows fresh in our yard, so it's a nice uh, nice another color to add to the add to the plate. So breakfast ceremony begins and uh, we were just having a little discussion about whether it's appropriate to put mint uh, next to a waffle. What was your opinion? Not unless it has ice cream with it. Not unless it has ice cream. You get Which is that. very good when you put ice cream and maple syrup over a waffle, it's yummy. Yeah, and so you're going to put maple, more did maple did. syrup on I, your... I know, I'd like pile of raspberries and you got a lot more raspberries than I did but that's okay so. so the reason you know I think it's good to have the mint and the lavender because it's relaxing it helps relax yourself through the bickering phase of breakfast <laughs> but I wanted to tell you a story as to why I have a morning glory here so maybe we should take the maple syrup out of the shop so uh, back in the 17th century in Japan, samurai era Japan, the great tea master Rikyu actually was bringing back the practice of tea and craftsmanship and the aesthetic of wabi-sabi. 
He was known for having a beautiful tea house and gardens. And in particular, he had a small field of morning glories and a very powerful man. Let's call him the great Shogun because I can't remember his name. He asked, he requested that Rikyu hold the tea for him, kind of demanded it actually. And the next day the Shogun arrived for tea and the field of morning glories were gone, ripped up by the roots. The Shogun was furious. And when he entered into the tea house, which he had to do by bending down, because Rikyu had designed, redesigned tea houses so that you could not get in standing up, nor with a sword strapped to your waist. So the Shogun had to get rid of his sword. He had to kneel down to enter the tea house. There is Rikyu. Sitting quietly, admiring a single morning glory in a Raku ceramic vase. And in that moment, the Shokan realized the lesson of Rikyu. Just about uh, 6.30, you can see we're already losing the morning light. 